Fergie. Um, uh, Egyptian uh, had uh, MD or in cardio in uh, anesthesia from Ain Shams in uh, master degree in uh, 2006 and doctor degree Ain Shams University in uh, 2011. He works in uh, Ain Shams University in the Academy of Cardiothoracic Surgery and uh, Nasser Institute for Research of uh, Cardiothoracic Surgery, one of the eminent uh, anesthesiologists for cardiothoracic anesthesia. Okay, Mohammed. Thanks, Dr. Yasser. Thanks, Dr. Saad. Thanks for attending my uh, presentation, my lecture about uh, global thing, cardiac surgery. Global thing, cardiac surgery. My contents, learning objectives about physiology of coagulation and anticoagulation, coagulopathy in cardiac surgery, point of care coagulation monitoring, and mediastinal bleeding, uh, cardiac tamponade. Uh, as uh, Dr. Uh, Wissam said about physiology of coagulation and anticoagulation, primary hemostasis, vascular endothelium platelets, secondary hemostasis involving coagulation cascade glycoproteins. So components of hemostasis, include vascular constriction, formation of platelet plug, coagulation cascade, and then modulators of coagulation and fibrinolysis. Then again, in this figure, component of hemostasis, vascular constriction, and platelet activation forming primary hemostasis, then coagulation cascades, prothrombin, thrombin, fibrinogen fibrin to form what's called platelet blood clot, starting then antithrombotic control mechanisms as fibrinolysis and clot degradation or clot lysis. About platelet block formation, uh, it's formed of platelet adhesion volume prank factor, then platelet aggregation, ADB and thromboxane A2 release, then at least uh, at end fibrinogen forming fibrin strands that make uh, the final pathway of clot formation. This is the classic model of coagulation cascade, intrinsic, extrinsic, and final common pathway at factor 10, then prothrombin, thrombin, fibrinogen, fibrin to form firm uh, cross-linked fibrin clots. While the new uh, cell-based model, as Dr. Wissam said, initiation, amplification, propagation, and cessation to form what's called thrombin burst or thrombin that uh, convert fibrinogen to fibrin, then we study modulators of coagulation as activation of coagulation cascade triggers several physiological pathways that tends to counteract and limit the spread of coagulation to the area of injury, like endothelial surface factors, removal of some activated factors from the circulation by the liver, and the most important, the interaction between the plated aggregatory effect of thromboxane A2 and the anti-aggregatory effect of prostacycline that make uh, clot forms as the site only of blood vessel injury, keep the vessel lumen free from clot. Then tissue factor pathway inhibitor. Antithrombin 3 is important for our uh, lecture. It points to the serine proteas in the coagulation system, blocking their activity as thrombin, factor 10, and factor 11. Thrombomodulin that uh, make with thrombin, thrombomodulin, thrombin complex that will activate plasma protein C and protein S that acts as anticoagulant against factor 5 and factor 8. And this figure will advise to us the modulators of coagulation and fibrinolysis, fibrinolytic pathway that make uh, clot lysis. Also, we can uh, revise and understand about the fibrinolytic pathway and fibrinolysis because my, our cardiopulmonary bypass will trigger hyperfibrinolysis, making more coagulopathy, as we'll, we say now. What are the pathophysiology of coagulopathy in cardiac surgery? What are the causes of coagulopathy in cardiac surgery? We have four uh, causes of uh, coagulopathy in cardiac surgery. Uh, 
the general cause of preoperative risk factors as patients on antiplatelets or anticoagulants, coagulation factor deficiency, liver or renal disease. Liver disease may cause coagulation factor deficiency or dysfunction, and renal disease may cause what's called thrombatinia. Type of surgery is important. Emergent surgery has no time to stop antiplatelet anticoagulants. Complex surgery, prolonged surgical procedure, prolonged cardiopulmonary bypass time, trigger coagulopathy, also redo cardiac surgeries with uh, extensive adhesions, extensive dissection, bleeding, and dissemination for coagulopathy. About effects of cardiopulmonary bypass, we have four factors, plated dysfunction, coagulation factor dysfunction, then hypothermia and hyperfibrinolysis. So we have two dysfunction, platelet and coagulation factor dysfunction. Platelet dysfunction from hemodilution of the cardiopulmonary bypass, heparin, hypothermia, and platelet activation with degranulation make it more weak when enter again the circulation. About cell salvage devices, reinfused products from cell salvage devices are deficient in platelets and coagulation factors, but rich in RBCs and hemoglobin. But we can allow platelet sequestration prior to cardiopulmonary bypass in uh, an optimal option to preserve platelet from uh, destruction and uh, dysfunction before cardiopulmonary bypass. We have also an option of intra or acute intra, uh, in, uh, acute normal volemic hemodilution we can draw patient blood from the, uh, the patient before cardiac bypass as a good source of RBCs and platelets. About coagulation factor dysfunction due to hemodilution, hypothermia, also use of bubble oxygenator and cardiotomy suction make trauma to coagulation factor. The most important hypothermia that can cause all the following about platelet and coagulation factor dysfunction, hypothermia induced fibrinolysis, the splenic circulation responds to hypothermia with platelet sequestration. Also, hyperfibrinolysis can occur due to hypothermia with increased level of plasminogen activators and complement system. So we can try to uh, allow usage of antifibrinolytics in cardiac surgery to prevent coagulopathy. So about heparin and the brotamine pharmacology, we have multiple adverse effects of heparin use in cardiac surgery or cardiac anesthesia, like heparin resistance, heparin rebound, heparin induced thrombocytopenia, and brotamin excess. About heparin resistance, it may not cause coagulopathy, but we can revise what mean by heparin resistance. Heparin resistance means failed heparin to elevate activity clotting time or failure of heparin to causing optimal anticoagulation due to congenital or acquired deficiency of antithrombin 3. So about the other items, heparin repound, heparin euthrombocytopenia, and the brotamine excess, all these can cause medical bleeding in cardiac surgery. What means of heparin repound? It means the bleeding from excess heparin entering the circulation after brotamine neutralization. That's what's sequestrated in fat, reappear again in circulation causing what's called medical bleeding. Heparin euthrombocytopenia will be discussed later, then brotamine excess, that brotamine may be causing anti uh, platelet dysfunction or platelet dysfunction in the circulation. I will run now in heparin euthrombocytopenia. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmed uh, discussed it before. Immune uh, adverse effect of heparin result in development of IgG antibody against heparin platelet factor four leading to thrombocytopenia, but it may cause also what's called the HIT, H-I-T-T, heparin youth thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. This is a part of physiology of HIT, illustrated in this figure. Heparin, platelet factor four, complex IgG triggering and release, then activating from uh, platelet uh, clot formation, thrombocytopenia, and may cause thrombosis. About diagnosis, we have three items, thrombocytopenia and extent of thrombocytopenia by quite drop of uh, platelet count by a factor of 30 to 50 
5.5% and investigation HIT antibody assay or titer. And this is the 4T scoring system for evaluating the pretest probability of heparin due to thrombocytopenia as acute thrombocytopenia, timing of onset, thrombosis, other causes of thrombocytopenia to give total score. If the score is low, no need for investigation, while high or intermediate risk groups should be treated as HIT until proven otherwise. Now about management of the cardiac surgical patient with HIT. The urgency of the surgical procedure is an important factor that can affect decision-making. It is preferable when possible to defer the operation until antibody tetra have become the undetectable or only weekly positive, which may occur after 90 days. If surgical postponement is not practical, then other therapeutic options must be considered. Currently, the direct thrombin inhibitors are used as the anticoagulants of choice. Herodine and Argatropon are approved by the US Food and Drug Administration for use in patients with HIT-related thrombosis. The use of these drugs as anticoagulants for cardiopulmonary bypass carry the risk of hemorrhagic complication, while bevelardine has been approved by the FDB for use in percutaneous intervention and because of its, its short half-life has been favored as an anticoagulant for cardiopulmonary bypass in patients with HIT. These are alternatives to heparin, and we will choose the category of direct thrombin inhibitors as herodine, bevalardine, and ergotropan as alternative to heparin before cardiopulmonary bypass. The most appropriate is bevalardine. While, however, no drug other than heparin has FDA approval for specific use as anticoagulants in patients undergoing cardiopulmonary bypass. Bevalardine undergoes renal elimination. Therefore, in seropositive HIT patients who have significant renal dysfunction, anticoagulant for urgent operation requiring cardiopulmonary pulmonary pulse can be accomplished with ergotropan and plasma pharesis prior to heparin to remove antibodies or heparin with concomitant antiplatelet agent to prevent platelet activation like tirofepan and iliprost. But these later two techniques have risk because they include heparin and have been fraught with increased risks of bleeding. The last item of coagulopathy during cardiac surgery are medical coagulopathy, like hypothermia, abnormal temperature, acidosis, abnormal pH, because normal pH and normal temperature are essential for the function of clotting factors and platelets. Hypocalcemia as calcium as one of the clotting factors, anemia because hemoglobin and fibrinogen may entangle RBC's clot formation. The most important are the point of care coagulation monitoring devices. Coagulation monitoring in the surgical patient has focused on preoperative testing to identify patients at increased risk for perioperative bleeding and intraoperative monitoring of heparin therapy during cardiac and vascular surgery. While more recently, availability of increasingly sensitive and specific point of care coagulation monitors has provided an opportunity to guide administration of blood component therapy and hemostatic drugs more specifically without the delays inherent in the standard laboratory testing, testing like thromboelastography and sonoclot test. We use activated clotting time in our cardiac surgeries as the normal AST in normal individuals before heparin is approximately 107 seconds. When we use cardiopulmonary bypass and need optimal anticoagulation, prolongation of the AST to greater than 480 seconds is usually deemed adequate. While in off-pump cabbage procedures, sometimes use partial heparinization with an AST target of about 300 seconds to allow memory harvesting with no clotting inside the memory artery. 
they, they are the clinical variables that can affect the activity clotting time as hemodilution, hypothermia, thrombocytopenia. Abrutinin has removed from the market 10 years ago. We can say that hemodilution and hypothermia may, may cause false prolongation of activity clotting time at cardiopulmonary bypass. About thromboelastography, the unique aspect of vesicoelastic measures lies in their ability to measure the entire spectrum of clot formation from early fibrin strand generation through clot retraction and eventual fibrin rises. EEG provides unique advantages over AST and traditional coagulation parameters because it provides functional information on platelets, clotting factors, and fibrinolytic processes. So we can say that the TEG may be used to differentiate surgical bleeding from coagulopathy following cardiac surgery. We can differentiate surgical bleeding from medical bleeding to decide the choice of reopening the patient again for surgery. About TEG parameters, Reaction time are value, time to initial clot formation, what's called initial clot time. It is considered comparable to the whole blood clotting time, can be accelerated by adding silly to the TEG sample cuvette. Our value is prolonged mainly due to deficiency of one or more plasma coagulation factor. So in patients with prolonged reaction time, it means a special for coagulation factor deficiency for uh, fresh frozen plasma administration. Maximum amplitude, it is a measure of clot strength and may be decreased due to either platelet dysfunction, qualitative or quantitative, or decreased fibrinogen concentration. Alpha angle and coagulation constant values, it measures the rate of clot formation. It may be slowed due to deficiency in coagulation factors or maybe due to heparin excess. And this is the normal TEG trace, normal thromboelastogram, starting from initiation, plated blood formation, then the clot grows, reaching maximum clot formation, maximum amplitude, then fibrotic pathway or excess fibrotic activity causing at, at, uh, at end a clot dissolution or clot dissolvent. These are the abnormal TEG trace that can help us to know the cause of coagulopathy after uh, cardiopulmonary bypass or during uh, cardiac surgery in general. Uh, we uh, concentrate in the hemorrhagic uh, section, either low clotting factor function with prolonged uh, reaction time, low platelet function with uh, prolonged maximum amplitude, low fibrinogen level, and the most important, uh, the fibrinolytic uh, issue of fibrinolytic pathology, uh, what's called tear uh, drop uh, appearance of thromboelastogram. Also, we have what's called platelet function analyzer or point of care platelet function analyzer. Platelet mapping, like sonoclot tests, can assess platelet function or thrombathenia even with normal platelet count as renal impairment or von Willebrand deficiency. Also can provide adequate surgical timing for patients on antiplatelet treatment, more accurate than knowing the T-half or pharmacokinetics of antiplatelet medications. The last section in my lecture about mediastinal bleeding and cardiac tamponade. Mediastinal bleeding, one of the most frequently reported complications of cardiac operation, it increases the risks of cardiac failure, dysrhythmias, and infection, and mortality. Appropriate treatment requires a rapid and effective diagnostic workup based on the knowledge of the pathophysiology induced by the cardiopulmonary bypass and the surgical trauma or surgical bleeding. There are many sites for surgical trauma or bleeding. We can conclude that among those Sites, the most frequent source of hemorrhage are the venous and the arterial anastomosis for cabbage surgery, memory bed after memory harvesting, cannulation site for cardiopulmonary bypass as aortic cannula and venous cannula, and the sternum. 
Okay. We must diagnose mediastinal bleeding. Bleeding after a cardiac operation is generally considered to be abnormal when it exceeds to 500 to 30 to, to 300 mil per hour for the first two hours, or 100 to 150 mil per hour thereafter. Bleeding in excess of these volumes usually requires immediate surgical intervention to avoid tamponade or hemorrhagic shock. A decision must be made as to whether or not an indication exists for surgical exploration as opposed to medical correction of a bleeding death is or a medical bleeding. Another scenario when the range of blood is minimal, the diagnosis of mediastinal bleeding is more difficult when drains is occluded. In this case, active bleeding may be present by the patient without being exteriorized. The drainage system may be occluded by clots or adhesions, isolating the bleeding site. Also, hemorrhage from non-drains space as pleural cavity will be hidden. So, early evacuation is important to avoid dramatic consequences of tamponading due to occluded uh, drainage system. Allow ear detection by frequent measurements of the right and left side filling pressures, as CVB and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, and of the cardiac output to suggest the correct diagnosis. So, patient with low cardiac output, low blood pressure, combined with low filling pressures, the most commonly used CVB, low blood pressure, low cardiac output with low CVB, low filling pressure, in play a significant volume depletion. While on the other hand, an increase in the right side flame pressure, increased CVB, congested neck veins, with low cardiac output suggests pericardial tamponading. Echo can be useful to confirm diagnosis, but also take care that it may be RV failure. Patients with RV failure, we may, be, we may have elevated right side filling pressure with low cardiac output. Preventive measures, prophylactic antifibrinotics, as a general uh, medication used in all surgeries, cardiac surgeries, meticulous surgical hemostasis, short cardiac pulmonary bypass, or even avoid it as in off pump cardiac surgery, maintenance of body temperature and pH all through the cardiac surgery and in ICU, close monitoring of post operative hypertension to avoid bleeding. Treatment protocol for excessive mediastinal bleeding after cardiac pulmonary bypass in adults. In very minimal bleeding with a stable hemodynamics, no treatment. While in bleeding as 50 to 150 mil per hour, we will search for hypothermia to correct by temperature. Search for hypertension to normalize blood pressure. For diffuse oozing suspected, cardiac surgeon may give us a trial of PEEP when the patient on mechanical ventilation to tamponade the diffuse oozing, but respect that PEEP may cause severe hypotension from decreased cardiac output and venous return. We can search about the cause of coagulopathy, as in heparin excess, we can give protamine when we can say elevated BTT, BT and AST, factor deficiency with elevated BT, we can give fresh frozen plasma. In patients with thrombocytopenia with low platelet count, we can give platelet concentrate. In patients with platelet dysfunction, with renal impairment, normal platelet count, but prolonged bleeding time, we can give desmopressin that stimulate release of uh, vulnerable plant factors from endothelium, but respect tachyphylaxis. Fibrinolysis with uh, elevated FDPs, D-dimer, and TEG characteristic form of teardrop uh, evidence of fibrinolysis, we can give tranexamic acid, epsilon amino caproic acid. And in case of massive bleeding, excessive bleeding, arterial bleeding, tamponade by clinical suspicion or by echographic finding, we must allow immediate surgical re exploration and Novo 7 administration. Yeah. One minute before uh, more, please, Dr. Muhammad, because the time is over. <laughs>
Yes, okay. About Novosev risk benefit factor seven act locally at the site of vessel injury by binding fish factor on sub endothelial cells and facilitate transformation of active factor uh, 10 and 9 to active forms. What's called resulting in a thromboburst? We can use it in thrombocytopenic patients. Novosev is effective in reducing bleeding and decreased RBC component therapy requirements instead of refractory bleeding as the last choice. However, reported complication rates associated with factor seven use as thrombosis. They also found that drug may be, or, uh, may be more effective if, if given early in the course of bleeding after correction of identifiable coagulation defects as uh, pH temperature fibrinogen level. The half-life of factor seven is only two to 12 and hours. So we respect uh, repeating the dose until the bleeding is controlled. In a comprehensive evaluation of label use of factor seven in Canada, they found that factor seven administration median dose of approximately 60 mic per kg was associated with significant reduction in transfusion without increase in death or major morbid events at thrombosis. My uh, take home message, a decision must be made as to whether or not an indication exists for surgical exploration as opposed to medical correction of coagulopathy only. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed Ashurbagi. And actually, we don't have uh, questions. Just I will, because of the time, I will just uh, ask you one question. What is the common coagulation abnormalities in cardiac surgery? Thrombocytopenia, hypofibronogenemia, what is the most common? We uh, say that it is multifactorial, especially in the patient with high risk. The patient with high risk of coagulopathy old age with prolonged carbon bypass time, we have mainly thrombocytopenia with hyperfibrinolysis. We give the patient a high dose of antifibrinolytic before and after yeah. carbon bypass, yeah. like uh, two gram uh, anti-cyclocoprin. Uh, then we respect to add uh, fresh frozen plasma or platelet concentrate in suspected ozone. All right. Is it common to use platelet transfusion during cardiac surgery or occasionally? Occasionally, but we no. respect uh, occasionally, but we respect the initial platelet count before cardiac surgery. If its platelet count is borderline, like 150, we can add uh, platelet concentrate after cardiopulmonary bypass and after closure of the wound. You give tranexamic acid prophylactically or no? Or we give case? we give tranexamic acid prophylactic in all cardiac surgical patients, adults, uh, before surgical stimulation. Or before surgical incision, we give about uh, approximately two gram uh, cyclocoprin in 80 uh, kilogram adults. Then we give again two gram uh, cyclocoprin after cardiopulmonary bypass. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed Ashurbagi, and we can.